Did you guys know that a third of Americans are obese? If you're anything like me, you are not a health freak, doesn't eat what they want, but you know, you look after yourself. I eat healthy, moderately. You know, I don't eat a load of shit, I don't eat a load of sugar, I don't eat a load of crappy crap crap, but a lot of people do. Now, I found this out a few months ago. In the UK, where I'm stationed, McDonald's chip have three ingredients. They have potatoes, oil, and salt. In America, there are like 15 ingredients. 15! One five. What the fuck is in them? Now, like many celebrities, they're too lazy to get on a treadmill and lift some weights and stay fit, so they pop a pill. Popping pills and glitch and deals, you know what I mean? Today, we're going to be exploring that. Can you lose weight popping pills? Obviously, weight loss pills, not like drug pills. It's over 60 million people. And if you have a mental or physical condition where you take medication that causes weight gain, it's easy for you to gain enough weight to be clinically obese. Fortunately, there's a new wave of medication. Fortunately, this is terrible. It's lazy, it's embarrassing. Get on a fucking treadmill, you obese f I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. It's not for mental health about it, it's about your food. You know, we're all miserable, we're all sad, we're all, no one wants to be here. Doesn't mean you stuff your face with Mac D's and Burger King, you know, it's about balance, healthiness, being strict, you know, can you not force yourself not to stuff your face 24-7? There's been a lot of buzz lately around the drug Ozempic because it's been very popular for people to take and drop 30 to 40 pounds pretty fast. The drug is approved to treat diabetes and because it works so well for weight loss, it's been in short supply because of the demand. This has made some people angry, saying that people who need it most aren't getting it. Because Kim Kardashian's taking it to keep her waistline thin. You know, I, I, I understand people have different body types, different body sizes. If you're happy, then I'm happy for you. Seriously, it, I don't want people feeling uncomfortable with how they feel. It's nothing to do with that. My point is, if you are genuinely sad or concerned about the way you look, and I'm talking your, your body, you can't change the way you look in terms of health, hair, face, eyes, can, but you know, it's not good, you shouldn't have all this like plastic surgery shit either. If you are unhappy with how you look, get on a treadmill, start going to a gym, start watching YouTube videos, there's millions of fitness influencers, you don't have to pay for it if you really want to, and pay for a PT once a week, good motivation, cost a decent amount of money to the point where you're like, no I have to go, I'm not wasting this money. These things are important, if you're not happy with yourself, stop looking to other people for answers, stop, oh I'm gonna, gonna take some medication for people with diabetes to lose 30 pounds get a grip of yourself look yourself in the mirror and go wow that's embarrassing i'd rather give in temptations and pop a pill every morning to try and lose some weight how how good are these do these like suppress your hunger do they actually just get rid of fat i don't know as of 2013 obesity has been classified as a medical disorder because it causes lots of other medical complications. The term is used pejoratively, and there's a lot of shame around body size. There's nothing shameful about body size. What I find shameful are the people who complain, the people who are chunkier, and who don't want to do anything about it. Being large, being thin, this is all different. You know, there's so many different things contributing to it. If you're unhappy, there's always things we can do about your weight, by the way. If you, you know, don't like the way you look, then yeah, sad thing. Things. I don't think he likes the way they look. I look myself in the mirror and go, fucking hell, what's happened to you? Every day. Doesn't mean I'm injecting Botox into my face to make me look like, like that weatherman off The Simpsons. Being someone lose weight was just saying, eat less and exercise more. Because that's what you have to do. That's the solution. That's the answer. Eat less or eat healthier. I think is probably what you'd put. And exercise. It's not. It's not. You know, this isn't f working out the uh, the nuclear equation. This isn't isn't e equals m c squared. This is simple, basic information. You know, a hundred thousand years or whatever, twenty thousand years ago or whatever, when humans were cavemen, spears, and you know, we looked cool and we were lean. It's because we didn't eat. You don't need to eat three meals a day. You don't need to stuff your face with Cheerios at 7 o'clock in the morning. You don't need to then stuff your face with McDonald's. You don't need to then eat a pie for tea. There's other ways to eat and consume. It's not that hard. Once you do it for one day, you're kind of like, oh shit, actually I'm not hungry. That feeling you feel in your stomach is not hunger, it's just fate. It's your body pretending you need food when you don't really need it. It's almost been trained into us that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Bollocks to it. Okay, your first meal of the day is probably the most important. But do you 
think then having a bowl of Cheerios is important? Having a bowl of Cocoa Pops is important? It's not. Having protein, having a fruit and veg in there, that's the important stuff. Not a bowl of fucking Cheerios and fruity nut cornflakes and craves. That stuff's not breakfast, it's just sweets. It's like a snack, it's like sweet snack, it's like having a dessert. This isn't the real answer because weight gain is complicated. Some of the disorders like depression and insomnia can cause weight gain all by themselves in the absence of taking medications. Having a history of trauma triggers a stress response in your body, making you more vulnerable to gaining weight through hormonal changes that affect your appetite and increase the risk of disordered eating. See, and that's a valid point, I'm sure. This all comes down to some certain things. We all, you know, have these problems, how all have these uh, things in our lives we don't like. But seriously, eating over and over again is not the solution. It's like we've been force-fed that we need all this food all day, all night. Oh, feed, feed, feed. It's dog shit. It's utter muck in the gut. Then, the medications that we use to treat mental health disorders notoriously cause weight gain. The biggest offenders are the atypical antipsychotics, and then second in line would be the antidepressants, or GLP-1s for short. And they are liraglutide, brand name Saxenda, which was approved in 2014, semaglutide, brand name Wigovi, approved in 2021. These drugs are FDA approved to treat obesity. But for your insurance to pay for them, you need to have a BMI of 30 or greater or you need to have at least a BMI of 27 with an obesity related condition like high blood pressure, diabetes, or other evidence of insulin resistance, 22% weight loss, as opposed to the five to 10 from the older drugs. 10 to 22% weight loss, that is insane. But you gotta ask the question, how? Why? You know, I'm not a scientist. I'm probably the furthest thing. If the scientists were at the top of the food chain, I'd be down in the sewers. That's how below I am. But that is not the answer. Taking a drug for diabetes. Imagine what that does to your heart rate. If you have liver or kidney disease, you may not be able to take these medications. Exactly. So it fucks your kidneys and fucks your liver. Because if your liver or your kidney doesn't work, you can't take them because there's nothing to, to destroy in the first place. The, you, you know, people think, oh, this is amazing. But everything has a cost. Cause and effect. It's simple, simple. You learn it in like year five, your butterfly wings and stuff like that. It's ridiculous. The drug makers behind Ozempic and other diabetes and weight loss drugs are now racing to develop a daily pill for people who want to lose weight. Experts say the pills in development would be easier to take than those once a week injections that are currently available and they may cost significantly less. Let's get this pronunciation right. Or for Glipron. Or for Glipron. Nearly 15% of their body weight over 36 weeks. And a study released just yesterday found the active ingredient in Ozempic and Wagovi could be effective in reducing weight when taken in a pill form every single day. All of these medications work by teaching um, sort of that hormonal axis between the brain and the gut, the way that your brain tells your digestive system, look, you've had enough. Mm -hmm. uh, it's those hormones that these, these uh, medications are impacting. They're also uh, impacting your blood sugar levels. Well, there are some downsides here. Um, from the people who I know who've been on these medications, they describe it like feeling like they're sick all the time. Like when you've overeaten, you might be burping. Um, they may have both constipation and diarrhea. So you oh, see, it makes you shit your pants. That's what it is. You're just shitting out everything inside. You feel sick permanently. You're just there on, like you're on a boat. Ugh. Who would want that? You're losing weight, but you're not necessarily feeling great um, when you're doing it. 90%, 90% said vomiting, diarrhea, burping. Nearly 20% had to stop taking the drug. And that would have been the people who really didn't give a shit. They were just there for the little money they give you in the trials. 20% um, of participants reported those four things. Right, listed. and wow. 10 to 20% had to stop the medication because they had those kinds of side effects. Oof. So you're not really enjoying food like you were. That's right, and that's why you're eating less, is your appetite is less, you just don't feel as good as you normally would. It's forever, it's a forever... Well, that's the problem, because if you stop, then the weight 
piles back on. Um, so, so you might have a big spike in your blood sugar. So for the rest of your life, you've got to take these pills that make you feel like shit, sick, diarrhea, wanting to throw up your insides. And if you stop taking them, you have to, uh, you put on the weight. You put it back on. Nah, bro. Look, I'm, I'm going to leave this here because I think this is ridiculous. I think if you are, are seriously considering doing this, look at yourself in the mirror. Think clearly about what you want because Jesus Christ. Christ, that is not the answer. We all struggle. No one is 100% happy, and I don't believe anyone who says they are. But overeating and feeding and acting like a pig in a silo is not the solution and instead of looking at losing weight as the solution we should be in school educating people on the benefits of exercise and eating well and not being a pig <coughs> don't get me wrong if you want to be a pig be a pig i don't care i you know i don't walk past someone and say wow you're a fat cunt you're a fat bum bum you know you're a fatty bum 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 like no if you want to be large go for it man as long as you're happy i'm happy i don't give a rat a bum cheeks what you do but don't come to me and pretend it's healthy. Don't tell me you're unhappy because you've chosen this life for 10 years to eat unhealthily, drink a mass amount of shit, and then now you're unhappy and you're like, you can't be bothered putting in the work. You've got to take a pill. Nah, not on my watch. But look, thank you so much. You guys have been great as always. Let me know your opinions because I think it's ridiculous. Drop a like. It really, really helps. Just boost it. Get it out there into the world. Drop a comment. Let me know. Really appreciate your time as always. See ya.